Good afternoon. It's uh, Tuesday, the 20th of January 2015, just after one o'clock, and welcome to UK Column News. I am your host today, Brian Gerrish. I've got Nick Green with me in the studio behind the technical desk. Um, change and um, positive change, I have to say, and uh, a lot of work going on at the UK Column. So for a couple of days, I am your sole host. Weather. Well, the weather in Plymouth is pretty cold and gloomy. We haven't got any snow. Temperatures down to about three degrees. But of course, across the rest of the country, we have a little bit of everything. We have uh, very cold conditions, rain, and we have snow with reports saying uh, more of the same on, on, on the way. Um, we're puzzled about this because, of course, um, the Daily Telegraph, one of Britain's most intellectual newspapers, recently reported an article uh, blaming global warming, which of course is causing the cold conditions across Britain, but blaming uh, that global warming on um, beavers and squirrels in the tundra. So there we are, that's what's causing the weather. Well, we've got some very, very uh, disturbing news for you today. We're gonna start straight, uh, straight away with the case of child abuse victim and whistleblower, Melanie Shaw. This was the very brave lady who went to Nottinghamshire Police and Nottingham uh, City and County Council to blow the whistle on not only her own abuse at Beechwood Children's Home in Nottingham, uh, but as it subsequently emerged, it emerged hundreds of other children in, involved. Now, we have supported Melanie as we've watched her go through a catalogue of abuse by the authorities since she whistle blew. Uh, we're going to recap some of that. And then I'm going to bring you an update on Melanie Shaw, which I'm sure many of you will find not only shocking, but unbelievable in uh, David Cameron's caring conservative Britain uh, in 19, uh, correction, in 2015. Um, so just to, if you just, just hold that one, for, will you, for, for a moment, uh, Nick, I'm going to do what I often do, which is an on-screen uh, uh, update. I've just got some information coming in, so stay with me. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, recap of uh, what has happened to Melanie. Well, of course, she was abused as a toddler by her family. Uh, she was then put into foster care where she was totally failed by Nottinghamshire Social Services. Uh, she was abused in foster care. She was placed in Beechwood Children's Home where she was badly um, sexually and physically abused, as were many other children. And of course, it was Melanie's testimony um, that started to reveal that children uh, had committed suicide in remarkable numbers. And indeed, Melanie uh, claimed that children were murdered at Beechwood Children's Home. Uh, once she whistle blew, she was warned that her child would be taken from her unless she stopped speaking out. She refused to remain quiet and subsequently Nottingham Social Services did in indeed take her child. She's then been imprisoned where she was held in solitary confinement. Uh, she was bullied, she was denied medical care and subsequently she was found guilty of arson in what many regard as a defective court hearing. Uh, Melanie Shaw is technically free uh, but under the control of Nottinghamshire probation. Uh, so why should we be concerned with Melanie now? Well, let's have a look at what's been going on. Since her trial, Melanie has still not received her proper benefits. She has still not been given a proper support worker. She has been continually harassed and bullied by Nottinghamshire police. This includes uh, cars following her, police officers, uh, uh, being unusually kind and saying your shopping's heavy, get in. It's involved late night phone calls. It's, it's involved people who claim they are senior police officers casually saying, I am sitting in your house on your sofa, but we're really looking after you, Melanie. She has also reported serious rape, uh, her rape to Nottingham Police. And uh, according to Melanie's latest testimony, there is no indication that those, that rape allegation is being investigated by Nottinghamshire Police. And we can also say that Nottinghamshire Council has no proper ongoing investigation into Beechwood, uh, nor have they set up any support arrangements 
for the hundreds of other um, victims. So Melanie Shaw still needs your help and support. Please help us to keep Melanie and all the other thousands of abuse victims in the public eye so that we can bring the abusers to justice. Now, keep that in your mind while we just hop across uh, to have a look at uh, reports that appeared in the press some time ago, uh, because, of course, around Elm Guest House in particular, um, there were uh, increasing stories, evidence coming to the fore of the abuse of youngsters and indeed uh, in other reports the murder of youngsters by individuals either connected directly with Elm Guest House or other paedophile rings in London and these rings were clearly leading uh, towards politicians and uh, members, senior members of the establishment. Uh, it has taken this lady, Home Secretary Theresa May, uh, to do precisely nothing to forward any inquiry uh, to investigate the numerous paedophile investigations going on around the country and specifically to investigate the evidence coming forward for paedophiles operating in the British political system and establishment. And in this uh, clip from the Andrew Marr show, um, she said... Um, well, the very institutions of the state that should be protecting children were not doing so, to which we say with unbelievable sincerity, Theresa May, who has conspired to place members of the establishment linked to those accused of child abuse, of head of a child abuse inquiry, says she doesn't understand how the abuse has been covered up. But of course, it's been covered up by simply not doing anything, delaying everything by time, and of course, destroying reports and documents and evidence of child abuse amongst the British political establishment. So enter Robert Green. Robert Green, of course, is due to appear in Aberdeen court tomorrow. Uh, this very brave campaigner has now been imprisoned twice for exposing child abuse, particularly that in Scotland. And, um, well, Melanie Shaw... Uh, is receiving unbelievable harassment now that she's back in Nottingham, which can only lead us to the conclusion that this very brave lady has many enemies who want her destroyed mentally or eradicated because of what she knows. And these are pictures of um, Melanie's home after a raid by at least four uh, heavily built uh, Nottingham police officers, of course, dressed in black, um, looking incredibly intim intimidating and uh, paramilitary. So let's start by having a look at uh, the rear door to Melanie's house. Uh, this is going to show damage to the rear door at the home of, of Melanie Shaw. And uh, this is the back door. And we're just circling this. This is where the lock and the door handle have been punched out. Uh, once the police arrive, they spoke to Melanie. Melanie said, I don't want you in the house. And the next thing, these officers smashed the way through the door. You can see the damage to the door on screen. Uh, this is how Nottinghamshire police deals with very, very vulnerable uh, child abuse victims. And perhaps more importantly, in this case, a child abuse victim who holds evidence which could bring paedophiles into court and to full justice. Um, this is another shot here of the door handle uh, down on the floor. And you can see, obviously, uh, the force that was used to break in through that back door. Uh, there's the door handle. And uh, this is the mark on the rear door where the uh, police used one of their heavyweight battering rams. So... What would common sense tell the majority of us? How would we deal with uh, child abuse victims? I think common sense would say they need to be treated with care and tenderness. They need to have the appropriate uh, support teams, mental health teams around them. And as highly vulnerable witnesses, surely they should be receiving police protection, uh, not large, uh, aggressive police officers breaking into their property. If you feel as shocked as we do about what's happening, please feel free to contact Nottinghamshire Police yourself uh, and to ask the simple question, why is Nottinghamshire Police Force doing this 
Is this deliberate harassment? Uh, is this another attempt to stop Melanie being able to give her evidence in court? Well, the people you need to approach are, this, uh, are these two gentlemen. So we've got Paddy Tipping, the Police and Crime Commissioner for Nottinghamshire. And uh, in set here, uh, we've got Chris Eyre, who's the Chief Constable of Nottinghamshire Police. Um, now, the little insert is a BBC News report where Chris Eyre was having to explain how uh, one of his officers discharged a live firearm uh, during a visit to the police station by local school children. And I believe I'm correct in saying that uh, in this incident, the young girl uh, was very lucky to escape injury, uh, not only from the bullet which came out of the, the discharge weapon, uh, but also by the shell case, which in fact hit her. So this is Britain under David Cameron in 2015, where the state harasses and victimises child abuse victims. Take a look at Nottinghamshire Police. Uh, this is their website. It's glowing. It's uh, very smart, very glitzy. And of course, what the message is, is what a wonderful police force you have. We're fighting crime. Trust us. So this is what they say about themselves. Our job is to protect the public and keep Nottinghamshire a safe place for people to live and work in and visit. Um, well, Nottinghamshire is internationally famous for Sherwood Forest, home of the Robin Hood legend, the principle of serving and protecting our communities remains just as true as it did back then. Are Nottinghamshire police seriously saying that they regard their policing job as equivalent to uh, Sherwood Forest and um, uh, Robin Hood, um, or are they in another reality? Well, it goes on because they're proud that crime across Nottinghamshire is currently at its lowest levels since 1977. Presumably, uh, uh, paedophile crime is down because Nottinghamshire police simply don't investigate. Uh, they rank themselves 10 uh, in uh, the number of forces uh, receiving overall customer satisfaction. Well, we can say with uh, total truthfulness that as far as Melanie Shaw is concerned, she regards Nottinghamshire police as brutal, untrustworthy, and incapable of investigating uh, paedophile activity and the possible deaths of youngsters around Beechwood uh, Children's Home in Nottinghamshire. Well, their success, Nottinghamshire's Police's success is largely due to our dedicated workforce of just under 4,000 officers and staff who were supported by a growing army of hundreds of special constables, cadets and volunteers. So here we get an indication as to how Nottinghamshire police see themselves not there to protect the vulnerable and particularly ultra vulnerable people like Melanie. Uh, they are in fact building a quote growing army of hundreds of special constables, cadets and volunteers. What do we say? This is the pattern across Britain. Uh, we're seeing increasingly brutal activity by the police. This must be a result of their training and indeed it must be a result of uh, mental reframing in that treatment, which is uh, in that training, which is taking away tradi traditional views and values and basic humanity like protecting the weak. Well, we sent an email to um, uh, the media team for um, Nottingham Police, uh, which I'll bring up on screen. We'd also spoken to that team yesterday and said, uh, is it true that the police broke into Melanie Shaw's house? And if they did, why was that necessary? And why was this vulnerable lady subjected uh, to what she found a terrifying incident just why would the police do that or feel it necessary to do it? Well, there was no reply to the telephone call. Uh, this is the email that we sent through to Nottinghamshire Police, and uh, I will read through. Uh, Dear media team, I called yesterday to ask if the allegations that some four to five police officers from Nottinghamshire Police had physically forced their way into the home of Beechwood child abuse victim and whistleblower Melanie Shaw was true. I understand that this incident occurred over the weekend of 17, 18 January. I may have missed your telephone response to me. 
Could you therefore confirm by email if the incident occurred? And if so, also explain why such force by a significant number of Nottinghamshire police officers was authorised against an extremely vulnerable abuse victim and a witness who forms a vital place in assisting the Knotts Police Operation Daybreak uh, looking into the Beechwood Child Abuse Investigation. Could you also confirm that Nottinghamshire Police is or is not acting to investigate allegations of rape that Miss Shaw has recently made to the police over the last few weeks? Thank you for your help. I look forward to your response on both matters. And of course, the UK column has received a stunning silence from Nottinghamshire Police. Uh, we've shown you the evidence of that uh, police attack on Melanie's back door. Uh, that was orchestrated. Her reports are very clear. It was Nottinghamshire Police that forced their way into her home. What is next? Melanie now lives in a home without proper security and she is terrified of further raids by Nottinghamshire Police or indeed harassing or intimidating phone calls. Uh, any members of the public who feel as outraged as we do, please feel free uh, to contact the Chief Constable or perhaps the uh, uh, Police Crime Commissioner. Well, is there progress in UK on exposing the paedophile rings at high level? Uh, we just remind you that, of course, um, the reporting organisation Ixaro claims to be in pole position on exposing what's going on. Uh, the problem is we are not seeing uh, any progress by Home Secretary Theresa May or indeed the wider police forces across UK, even though uh, last week there was a large meeting at Westminster where 300 child abuse victims and members of the public uh, were there to uh, demand that the government starts a full, proper and independent inquiry into abuse connected with uh, politicians and the establishment. Uh, the reply has been silence. Uh, so therefore, we're going to say that uh, child murders connected to British politicians are coming to the surface. Uh, when will Nottinghamshire Police or indeed other police forces start the proper investigations into Beechwood or other incidents? So there we are. If uh, we want to know why Britain is rapidly descending into chaos, look no further than the fact that we are governed either by criminals and paedophiles or indeed people who, for whatever reason, uh, do not have the courage to stand up and uh, blow the whistle on their own colleagues. Well, something equally sinister is now emerging, which is starting to be reporting in the mainstream press. And let's return to yesterday's news, uh, where it was reported that um, GCHQ was uh, being given additional powers uh, by Prime Minister David Cameron uh, to spy on members of the public and private firms. And David Cameron was so enamoured with uh, the need for further sp spying by the state that he had given special permission for uh, camera crews to go inside GCHQ. Um, what was he saying? Uh, well, this is what he was saying. The, uh, the visit to the HQ was granted by David Cameron, who's pushing to give agencies like GCHQ access to encrypted communications. Uh, but he's also warned internet firms they must work with security agencies to stop their networks becoming a safe haven for terrorists. Now, we are recovering this news because we're going to add to it today, uh, but also, of course, to say that this is unbelievably dangerous, uh, that we have a government, a conservative government under David Cameron, which has been destroying its own conservative party records uh, relating to pre-election promises. Those have all been wiped off their uh, website hidden from the public. Uh, we've got a government that has been destroying records about child abuse, but that same government now wants to give even greater powers to GCHQ to spy upon us. Now, we reported, um, and this was accurate reporting, that within J GCHQ's massive staff of over 5,000 people, uh, there were increasing teams of young employees uh, these are young people, mid-late 20s. Uh, their colleagues regard them as fanatical in the way they approach their work 
And um, it's been indicated to the UK column that some of these youngsters uh, seem to regard what they do as one giant computer game. They're losing um, the ability to reason what is real life and what is just a computer game spying on uh, their fellow human beings. We also reported accurately that uh, the political charity Common Purpose uh, had been training members of the GCHQ staff. Uh, how is this possible when, of course, uh, GCHQ is one of the most highly um, secure intelligence uh, buildings in the country? Uh, every member of staff is vetted for their uh, ability to keep secret secret. And suddenly we have a political charity which boasts it gets people to act outside their authority and indeed boasts that it holds secret meetings behind closed doors with its so-called future leaders. How was this political organisation able uh, to recruit and train GCHQ staff uh, for, the, for Common Purpose's own political agenda? Where does this take us? Well, it takes us on to Cameron's grab at state control of the press. So let's see how this pans out. Uh, David Cameron, of course, is a common purpose advocate. He strongly supports common purposes work uh, and he has particularly assisted them with the setup of common purpose in India, Disha project in India, here we are. And uh, note that that's connected in with Chris Patton, uh, BBC chairman, um, as was, and uh, also in with Francis Maud of the Cabinet Office. And of course, it was common purpose that was going to cr was going to train the top 200 civil servants. So um, who else do we need to look at around David Cameron? Uh, we'll enter David Bell and Julia Middleton, the two senior people from Common Purpose. And these are the same individuals that created the Media Standards Trust, uh, which, of course, was to uh, help Brian Leveson run the Leveson Inquiry to take control of the press and media in UK. Um, the campaign was hacked off, and uh, if we follow it through, we can also see links through into Edinburgh University and uh, Media Dem, who we've mentioned before. Uh, that links us nicely into the European Union, and uh, we've now virtually got a suite of actions which show that David Cameron's Conservative government is working through Common Purpose to take control of our civil servants. Uh, but of course, we've also got direct links through to European Union policy. Uh, a few other organisations we can add in here. Uh, these are the sort of organisations that don't tend to occur or don't tend to be revealed in the mainstream press. Uh, but we're going to say Goldsmith University, the Leverhulme Media Research Centre and the Media Reform Coalition have all been working very hard in the background uh, previously to influence the Leveson inquiry. Uh, but their job is to uh, help slide in controls over the uh, British press. So today, what's been reported? Um, let's bring ourselves back to what... Uh, David Cameron is up to, and a report by the Daily Mail. Here we are. So uh, what has emerged is that British spooks have tapped emails from UK and US media, and they've rated journalists alongside terrorists uh, as potential security threats. Now, this has come out of the leaked Snowden files, uh, but apparently uh, British spooks intercepted emails from US and UK media organisations and they rated investigative journalists alongside terrorists and hackers as potential security threats. In, uh, internal advice circulated by intelligence chiefs at the government spy centre GCHQ apparently claimed journalists and reporters representing all types of news media represent a potential threat to security. Journalists and reporters representing all types of news media represent a potential threat to security. Well, that should be frightening enough for, the for free speech and our liberty. Let's follow it through. Uh, these are some of the detailed comments in the article. We've got British 
uh, sorry, British security officers scooped up 70,000 emails in just 10 minutes during one interception exercise in 2008. Uh, this shows you the sheer power of GCHQ, 70,000 emails collected in 10 minutes. Uh, one restricted document, which according to The Guardian was intended for those in army intelligence, warns that journalists and reporters representing all types of news media represent a potential threat to security. So that key statement was apparently sent through to army intelligence. Um, the report also continued of specific concern are investigative journalists who specialise in defence-related exposés, either for profit or what they deem to be of the public interest. Now, this is a very critical statement, uh, but of course, because of course, in the public interest is the, is the most important thing a journalist can work to, which is bringing the truth uh, to the public so that they can then make the informed decision. Uh, well, they scored journalists. So here we have British intelligence agencies scoring journalists. And uh, uh, just hold the slide, Nick, uh, for a second. I'll just say that if there's any G GCHQ people watching the UK Column News programme today, can I welcome you on board and uh, just say that uh, we're fascinated to now see uh, what GCHQ is really doing as opposed to what it claims to do. Where has this led, however? Well, this is the sting, uh, because according to the Mail's article, newspaper editors and lawyers have called for a new freedom of expression law. This is a state grab for control of the press and media, and let's have a look at how it works. Central, Labour and Conservative Lib Dem governments have, of course, unleashed the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya and Syria and more, uh, creating a terror threat from so-called extremist Islam. Having created the terror threat, this has enabled Labour and Conservative governments to give GCHQ and the intelligence services more power to snoop. Uh, GCHQ has moved on to set up financial contracts with uh, NSA uh, in the States uh, so that they can now move across to spying on journalists and the general public. Um, GCHQ have been provably trained by Common Purpose, but of course it's been Common Purpose that's also been stoking up the call for state control of the press uh, via the Media Standards Trust and uh, Leveson. Well, the Edward Snowden documents uh, show the scale of the snooping operation and uh, the, what we now have occurring is the mainstream press and media reporting the sheer horror of increased state snooping. And uh, that's led to this um, uh, snake, the hidden snake, newspaper editors and lawyers call for new freedom of expression law. Why is that law important? Well, if we think it through, a new freedom of expression law enacted by the use of statute law will give the government immediate demarcation and control over what can and cannot be reported. And the British state will therefore achieve both aims of more states spying on the general public and greater control of the press and media. And well, he's done it because David Cameron will have moved Britain significantly closer to becoming a communitarian Marxist dictatorship. Uh, we'll say to our audience today, uh, if you're watching us live or you're listening uh, live, uh, once we do the investigation on what the British state is doing, it is so easy to pull apart their plans to literally destroy Britain as a nation state. And of course, this is why we now see panic uh, in the government uh, and why the government wants to unleash the British intelligence services on journalists, whether they're mainstream journalists, of course, or whether they are people like ourselves, uh, amateur, but we hope effective. We'll jump back. Let's have a look at how things were set up around um, the Leveson inquiry. Uh, we'll remind ourselves, David Cameron, central to all of this, Prime Minister, Privy Councillor, and of course, Common Purpose. Um, Nick Clegg, 
unelected deputy prime minister, um, made Lord Pr President of the Privy Council, an unelected man with unbelievable power over what happens in, in the UK. So uh, David Cameron sets up the Leveson Inquiry with Brian Leveson QC, uh, just happens to be another Privy Councillor. And of course, decisions in the Privy Council are not, uh, are not in the public eye. Chatham House rules effectively. And what better thing to uh, introduce David Bell, uh, the big man uh, who was not only a senior member on the board with Brian Leveson, but also, of course, working with the Media Standards Trust and Common Purpose. Uh, up at the top, uh, let's bring in this gentleman, Lord Phillips of Worth, uh, chair of the Foundation Group, former president of the Supreme Court, and, oh dear, another Privy Councillor. Uh, he appointed Sir Hayden Fiz um, Phillips, to be chair of the appointments panel for the Independent Press Standards Organisation. Uh, so here we see an old boy network like none setting up the inquiry, uh, setting up the control organisation for the press. And we just say, well, there's a, one other gentleman here, Paul Andrew Vickers from the Tr Trinity Mirror Group, uh, who also was able to put in information to um, uh, uh, for Lord Leveson to um, evaluate in, in his drive to take control of the press. So it all fits to together very nicely and uh, Mr Vickers helped create the IPSO structure and rules. Uh, we can also look at it in this direction uh, because as we move towards the so-called Royal Charter, uh, we've got closed door meetings in Buckingham Palace. We've got Nick Clegg central to talks in his role as Lord President Lord President of the Privy. Uh, we've got uh, Lord McNally, the Justice Min Minister, uh, Jeremy Hunt, Health Secretary, and Maria Miller, the Culture Secretary. So there we are. It's uh, all, all done in plain sight, but a little analysis by the column uh, shows that we have had a hidden campaign across all three parties, Lib Lab Con, uh, to take control of the press. Why do you need control of the press and media? Because no dictatorship can possibly survive with a healthy, free press and media. Um, so UK Column has been reporting on a number of subjects. Uh, a little while ago, we reported on the uh, use of particular medication for members of the armed forces going south to Sierra Leone on board RFA Argus. And uh, we pointed out here that uh, they had been given the anti-malarial drug Larium, uh, which had side effects including anxiety, confusion, hallucinations and mental depression. So under the new situation of GCHQ, we can do this. Uh, we are sure that since that's a military report, uh, it's been classified military intelligence and presumably the UK column has now been classified a low-risk terrorist organisation. Uh, we've also reported on big problems with mod contracts, uh, 5.7 billion wasted after a string of operating areas. Well, it's, they're not errors, these are deliberate uh, breakdown of Britain's procure, military procurement system. But of course, this was a, a military article. Uh, so same rule applies, military intelligence, the UK column is a possible low risk terrorist organisation. How about this? Of course, Russia Today was accurately reporting that UK teacher, teachers uh, had been asked to inform police on extremist students, and presumably GCHQ would classify that assisting Russia, a hostile military power, uh, and therefore classifying the UK column a possible low-risk terrorist organisation. We've also reported on the failure of the government to deal with uh, child abuse and paedophiles. And here's Nottingham Mickey Summers, a very brave man who's been fighting uh, to bring ab abusers to justice. Um, presumably, the state would classify this as undermining the British government by exposing paedophiles. Or we could go in this direction. Uh, this is where we'd reported on the fact that uh, um, Rotherham had targeted uh, members of UKIP. Of course, UKIP is, is a, an approved party. And um, 
since we brought up the fact that uh, UKIP had been attacked by the authorities in Rotherham, um, we would be attacked by GCHQ for undermining the British government by promoting UKIP. And that would mean that the UK column was a possible low-risk terrorist organisation. Uh, here we are reporting on the EU, of course, one of the most corrupt organisations in the world, which has still failed to produce any signed off audited accounts. Uh, we reported on the mail's comments uh, about Mr. Junkers and what was going on uh, to do with the movement of people in states. We said it was a puppet show where the British Prime Minister was simply a boy being played. Uh, we believe that GCHQ would classify this undermining the European Union by reporting. And that would mean that the UK column was a possible low-risk terrorist organisation. Uh, we also uh, commented on the fact that David Cameron was reported to have said, uh, I've already done Libya, where shall I invade next? And of course, this is the Prime Minister that boasts a long lineage uh, of blue blood, uh, descended from Moses. Uh, we commented on all of this. And we believe that that would result in us being classified by GCHQ as undermining the British government by telling the truth. Clearly uh, a low risk terrorist organisation. And of course, if we commented on GCHQ and we made comment on their selection and training procedures and the fact that uh, the political charity Common Purpose is now active in one of our most vital security organisations, uh, we think this would certainly be noted by GCHQ and uh, we think that will be assessed as intelligent analysis of GCHQ raising the risk of the public knowing the truth. That of course is a classic um, example of a low risk terrorist organisation. And uh, from GCHQ to North Korea, um, we pointed out that uh, uh, Kim uh, was saying that uh, only he could have his name and uh, we spotted similarities with David Cameron. Well, he's de descended from Moses, uh, but he's also known as His Excellency within the UN, uh, David our King Cameron. This would probably be classified by GCHQ as undermining the British government by telling the truth through humour. So that would classify the UK column as a possible low-risk terrorist organisation. If anyone thinks I'm joking, um, let's bring you across to Peter Hitchens, uh, who we reported, um, and of course was reported in the mail, uh, as saying this, we are on the verge of founding Britain's first thought police, using the excuse of terrorism, whose main victim is considered thought. Theresa May's Home Office is making a law which attacks free expression in this country as it has never been attacked by before. So we have a very well respected journalist who is clearly now seeing the intense dangers of a massive state clampdown in Britain. And of course, with the lack of free, open and honest reporting in the press and media uh, comes total loss of liberty. And I think uh, Peter Hitchens uh, was well aware of that, which is why he wrote such a hard-hitting article. If you're reeling with the reports we're producing today and thinking, what on earth do we do about it? Well, of course, speak out the truth. Get out there and work with friends and neighbours. Support one another. Uh, but you may also like to support the British Constitution Group uh, by attending our event on the, the weekend of the 28th, uh, of February 1st of March, uh, Friday the 27th is the date indicated there, uh, but two days where the, where the British Constitution Group is going to be working as hard as possible um, to show people what they can do to stop this steady decline of Britain into what is clearly a very dangerous communitarian police state. A reminder that uh, Robert Green will be appearing in court tomorrow. He's done so much. There is a possibility that Robert could be returned to prison. Uh, we'll say to everybody, please support Robert Green at the Aberdeen Sheriff's Court tomorrow, 21st of January. 
Um, please attend if you can. It's important that people are there to see justice being done, however that justice is delivered. This report, of course, must be classified by GCHQ uh, because Robert has been exposing child abuse in the Scottish establishment and therefore we believe that Robert Green would, also, would already be regarded as a possible low-risk terrorist organisation by GCHQ. On that note, we will leave you. Uh, things in UK becoming very, very serious under what is clearly a conspiracy by the Labour Party, the Lib Dems and the Conservative government to undermine freedom of speech and liberty. Uh, the next step for the Lib Lab Con is to destroy the British Constitution and the rule, rule of common law. If they achieve that with a clampdown on free speech, uh, we are going to find it very hard to extricate ourselves from that situation. So don't be shy, don't sit at home emailing, get out there talking to people, warning people, and above all, educate everybody you can, including, of course, the police, who ultimately we need to bring these perpetrators to justice. Thank you very much, GCHQ, for joining UK Column News Live. Uh, we're very pleased that we can speak directly into the heart of GCHQ by one of your big television screens. We hope you'll stay with us and uh, we hope ultimately you also will be working to expose the treason at work in UK. That's the end of the news today. Thanks for joining us. I will be back same time tomorrow. Bye bye.